What's up everyone, my name is Cam. I am a certified dog nutritionist and founder of The Dog Nutritionist. This is my dog food review of Hills Kidney Care dry and wet tinned food. This video is gonna be broken up into a few parts to help you best understand why in fact this food is not the right option for your dog. The first thing that we're gonna look at is how food affects the kidneys and why diet is such a vital part uh, of the management of lost renal function. We're gonna look at the causes of lost renal function and canine kidney disease. So we can assess whether the ingredients in this food address the causes and effectively provide your dog with the support that they need. We're gonna look at why your veterinarian recommends this food how on earth a healthcare professional can recommend a processed food to a dog with a health issue. It's a pretty dark story. We're gonna look at the company who makes this food, why they've been under serious legal scrutiny recently, and finally, your next steps. Because um, spoiler alert, you are gonna to want to change their food. This is a good part uh, for me to say that I'm not a veterinarian, I'm just a dog nutritionist, and this is not medical advice. This is for education purposes only to help you make the best possible decision around what you put into your dog's food bowl every single day, the most important decision you will ever make. If you're looking for medical advice, please do speak to your vet. How does food affect your dog's kidneys? Well, when your dog eats, the food travels through their gastrointestinal tract, it's broken down, and the nutrients are absorbed and passed on into the blood via the small intestine. The blood then circulates around the body with all these nutrients and is filtered by the kidneys. So what your dog eats will directly affect the health of their kidneys. And it's why diet is such a vital part of the management for a dog that's suffering from renal issues. To assess whether or not these two foods are good for your dog's kidneys or renal issues, we need to look at what causes these types of issues. And then we're gonna see if the ingredients address those causes. The causes of lost renal function are long-term low-grade inflammation, increased waste in the food, gut microbiome dysbiosis, chronic bacterial infection, high blood pressure, congenital or birth malformation, vitamin D deficiency, and prolonged periodontal disease. We're gonna come back to those causes after I've gone through the ingredients to see if these foods address those causes. The first ingredient in the dry food is brewer's rice, and that is immediately sounding alarm bells in my head because dogs have no nutritional requirement for carbohydrates. If you put a dog on a diet high in carbohydrates over a long period of time, it will put their digestive system under stress. It's also not natural, so it'll affect the balance of bacteria in their gut. It'll cause inflammation along the gastrointestinal tract. And this is not good if you're um, trying to address the causes of kidney disease or lost renal function. The second ingredient is animal fat, which is an animal byproduct. We're gonna get into animal byproducts after we've been through both sets of ingredients. Maize, maize is another low cost, low quality carbohydrate that is not healthy for dogs. Holistic veterinarians have found connections to the consumption of maize to allergies and intolerances in dogs. It's really hard to break down and it will cause digestive issues if overconsumed. Dried beet pulp, this is what they give to horses. It's just a low cost, low quality fiber. Dried whole egg and pea protein. This is where your dog's protein is coming from in this meal. These are two extremely low quality sources of protein and that is a major issue. For many of you, you would have been told that your dog needs a low protein diet if they have renal issues and this is simply not the case. There is no research whatsoever that shows that protein contributes to renal disease progression or the loss of kidney function. When your dog gets a blood test and they see raised creatinine levels, which is protein waste, 
it's assumed that the way that you deal with this protein waste is to restrict protein. Yes, this will reduce creatinine, but it will also have seriously detrimental effects on other areas of your dog's health. They're gonna lose mobility quicker. They're going to get a dry skin, dull, coarse coat. And these are the issues that you'll be able to see on the outside. On the inside, there could be a lot worse things going on. Protein restriction is only necessary for later stage dogs. You do not treat um, renal disease, stage one renal disease, the same as you treat stage three or stage four or stage five. If your dog hasn't lost that much kidney function, putting a highly restrictive diet on them it's just going to make them unhealthy in so many other areas and it's just it's only done so they can make one generic formula for a very specific very unique health issue that requires different levels of management restrictive diets are not good and dried whole egg and pea protein as protein sources for dogs it's just not recommended not at all. Your dog needs quality, quality protein sources if they're going to have a restricted quantity of protein, which again is only recommended for later stage dogs. Digest, another animal byproduct. Minerals, soybean oil, pea bran meal, fish oil, flaxseed, L-carnitine, vitamins, trace elements, and beta carotene. In the wet in food, you have May starch, again, only 5% chicken despite being labeled as chicken. Animal fat, another animal byproduct. Dried beet pulp for horses. Digest, another animal byproduct. The cost of nearly 10 to 40, 10 pounds per kilogram or $13 per kilogram. This is extortionate. What are animal byproducts? Well, these are some of the worst quality ingredients available. Ingredients so low quality, they're illegal to serve to humans. And here's what can go into animal byproducts legally in the UK. Slaughterhouse byproducts like hide, skin, horns, feet, pig bristle, feather or feathers or blood, heads of poultry, milk production byproducts, materials from on-farm slaughter of rabbits or poultry, hatchery waste, fish and and byproducts from fish processing factories, imported pet food, shells from shellfish, blood placenta, wool, feather, hair, horns, hoof cuts, and raw milk from live animals. Rodents, unless they're from zoos. Let's go back to the causes of lost renal function and kidney disease and see if these foods address those causes and therefore provide your dog with the nutrition support that they require. Overall bodily inflammation. Well, inflammation reduction requires a natural fresh food diet to be implemented. It's impossible to reduce inflammation or to create an anti-inflammatory diet out of processed foods. If you have uh, tonsillitis, you're not going to start eating McDonald's. If you have arthritis, you're not going to start eating Pizza Hut. Processed foods for inflammatory issues is crazy. It's counterintuitive. Increase waste in the food. These products contain human waste ingredients and synthetic additives, vitamins when cooked, that equals more, more waste that goes through the kidneys. Gut microbiome dysbiosis. The balance of bacteria in your dog's gut can only be restored with natural fresh foods. It's just impossible to manipulate your dog's gut with highly processed foods. Chronic bacterial infection. Again, this can be only managed with a natural balance of um, bacteria in your dog's gut. So a fresh food diet needs to be implemented. If not, they're gonna be more likely to suffer from infections. High blood pressure, low quality carbohydrates, low quality fats, that's what increases blood pressure. Vitamin D deficiency, Hill's dog food has literally killed dogs due to vitamin D toxicity before. Do they, are they reliable in the quantity of vitamin D they put into their foods? No, and that's why they had to recall 22 million cans of dog food and why their dog food killed dogs, because they got vitamin D levels 
so wrong. 33 times over the recommended safe limit. Prolonged periodontal disease, kibble gets stuck in dog's teeth. It's a myth that it cleans their teeth. If you've ever chewed a biscuit, you'll know that you have to remove the remnants with your finger from the back of your mouth and processed foods with, with more waste ingredients stay in your dog's teeth, causing plaque and bacteria buildup. How could your veterinarian recommend you such a low quality food when your dog is suffering from a health issue that demands the support of a proper fresh food diet? Well, the reason being is that when they go to veterinary college, they are taught by Hills or Royal Canin or Purina. The companies whose food they sell teach them in veterinary college. Vets only receive on average 19 hours of nutrition training for all animals. To put that into context, I've done over 900 hours just on dogs. So they're, they're misinformed because they're educated by the companies who just want them to sell their food. They aren't trained enough and this is how they end up recommending low quality processed foods to sick dogs. It is pretty dark, pretty upsetting, um, and just a bad look. How in this day and age a healthcare professional can recommend such a thing is, is beyond me. Did you know that veterinary diets have come under serious legal scrutiny recently because they're not actually that healthy and being sold through veterinarians makes it seem like these are actually healthy diets when in fact they're not. In the California Court of Appeals, the panel concluded that under the reasonable consumer test, plaintiffs sufficiently alleged that the sale of prescription pet food exclusively through vets or with veterinarian approval was a deceptive practice. Also, plaintiffs satisfied the heightened pleading standard for fraud because they alleged sufficient facts to show that prescription pet food and other pet foods were not materially different. Says it all, doesn't it? Now, I mentioned that food recall earlier. In 2019, Hills had one of the biggest food recalls ever. 22 million cans of pet food was recalled because the vitamin D was 33 times over the safe recommended limit. Attorney Nairan Rose Rash believes that hundreds, if not thousands, of pets had died or become seriously ill as a result of this poisoning. Are these diets formulated with your dog's best interests at heart? Should your dog be consuming kidney care dog food? Well, they don't address the causes of lost renal function or canine kidney disease. They're made with the lowest quality ingredients possible and you're paying the most expensive rates possible. The reason why your vet recommends it is not due to understanding what's actually best for your dog, but rather repeating what the big pet food companies want you to hear, which is this is the only option when it isn't. The company is under legal scrutiny because this could be perceived as a deceptive practice and tantamount to fraud because it's no different to any other dog food that you can buy on the supermarket shelf. And this company has actually poisoned dogs before, dogs eating the prescription diet. So no, it's not worth it. What are your next steps? I have written a free research article on how you can make the best possible homemade diet for renal support. I have also made a nutrition guide which comes with recipes specifically for renal support that covers dogs that are at any stage, at any age. You can use ingredients that your dog enjoys, personalize the recipes to them. That is the best possible nutrition and it's cheaper to make your dog's food out of fresh human grade ingredients than it is to buy this formula of waste ingredients. And that is how you're gonna take control of your dog's health in the best way possible. I hope this video hasn't been too stressful. I hope it's helped you. Um, that's all I want to do is to help you put your best foot forward. We're all doing the best we can with the information that we have. And as a dog owner, you're not expected to know everything. 
you're just expected to do the best you can with the information you have. So I hope you use this information to help your dog. I've got plenty more videos. I've made a free dog nutrition course, which you can find on my YouTube channel um, and visit my website. If you need more help, book in a consultation with me and we'll get your dog the diet they really, really need.